Happy Tuesday to you, Shenandoah. Can you believe it is January the 5th, 2021? Did you ever think that we would make it to turn the calendar from 2020, but it is a brand new year. I wanted to share a few thoughts with you just uh, from the Word of God and some things that God showed to me early this morning that I wanted to share with you. And then we'll talk uh, a little more practically about uh, what's going on here at Shenandoah this week. Every Sunday morning, I am blessed to get multiple texts from people around the country, uh, a lot of pastors uh, that uh, send me a, a text of encouragement, uh, maybe a scripture verse. Uh, there are folks in, in our church here every Sunday morning, almost like clockwork. Uh, I can uh, know that I'm going to receive something from them, and it's always an encouragement to my heart. Uh, some Sundays I get one from one of our own, Mrs. Caroline Daniels. And Mrs. Daniels sent me something that I'm actually going to share uh, some of her words from this past Sunday. She starts with uh, the book of Psalm and uh, chapter number 65 and verse number 11. The Bible says, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. Uh, obviously, that's a verse that speaks about the beginning of a year or could at least have an application to the beginning of a year. Let me read you a little bit of what uh, Mrs. Daniels said to me in this text. She says, The Bible uses the word year more than 700 times, beginning in Genesis 1, where God established the sun and the moon to be signs for seasons and for days and for years. Obviously, we know every morning when the sun rises in the east, it's a, a new day, a new dawn. God created the world as a sphere. Which, uh, which rotates on its axis every 24 hours and revolves around the sun every 365 days, ensuring that we have an endless supply of new beginnings. And I loved that thought. You know, we all needed a new beginning, didn't we, as 2020 closed out. We all are looking for something new this year. She goes on to say, as we begin a new year, remember that a new you begins with praising God for His new beginnings. He has so much in store for us. How could we not thank Him? And obviously those are sweet, sweet words of great encouragement for me personally. Thank you, Mrs. Daniels, for that. But I wanted to share them also with you for our very first Facebook update of 2021. But then I was also reminded, kind of thinking about new things and new beginnings, I thought about the book of Lamentations. As soon as I begin to quote this verse, it's going to be familiar to you. But I want to, I want to parenthesize and say this. I want you to be reminded from what book I'm about to read this. Jeremiah the prophet, he wrote two Bible books under inspiration. One was the name of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. His second book was called Lamentations. The word lament means to cry, to sorrow. Do you remember that he was called the weeping prophet? So with that in mind, can I remind you what he says in Lamentations? Chapter 3, verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. You know, obviously that's the phrase from which the great hymn written by Thomas Chisholm, we often sing it, it's my favorite hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassions, they fail not. As Thou hast been, Thou forever wilt be. Great is Thy faithfulness. And you remember the chorus. I guess I'm just trying to say, these new mercies every morning are because of the very faithfulness of God. Now that leads me to ask you a question. So, how great has our faithfulness been to Him even in 2020? You know, God did not fail us. God is still on the throne. He allowed what happened in 2020 in your own personal life, in our church, in our country, in the world. But I want us also to be reminded that we have an obligation back to God to be faithful to Him. It was one of the verses that I mentioned on Sunday 
in my sermon. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Can I ask you, have you been faithful to God in 2020? Have you been faithful to church in 2020, whether it be in-person church or online church? Church is still important, regardless of if a pandemic has taken away the normal schedule of things. I'm afraid that so many have forgotten to be faithful to their Bible reading and prayer, maybe to their giving, maybe to their witness, to just the kind of spirit that we're supposed to have, even in the midst of dark days. And so the Lord taught me that this morning, and I wanted to share those thoughts with you this morning. You know, speaking of preaching and church, I had two sermons the Lord laid on my heart this past Sunday morning and then evening. Sunday morning, I entitled it, Is Your Life Decent and in Order? We kind of really talked more practically about our homes and families and lives and really some of the character issues that we need to just get in order in our lives. Sunday evening, I uh, gave a, a message in, entitled, Setting the Church in Order. So we looked on Sunday morning of our personal homes, our personal houses. Sunday night, we looked at the house of God. And obviously, as a pastor, I want our church to be in order. And I, you know, let's be honest, 2020 got us out of order of a lot of things, a lot of normalcy, a lot of routine, a lot of schedule. And so 2021, I'm praying that God would help us to get back in order. I hope you'll get back in order as well. Hope you'll be back in the house of the Lord on Wednesday evening. We'll be continuing our study in the book of Acts. This will actually be lesson number 30, and we're going to finally get to Acts chapter number 2. And so that's where we're going to begin. I've already got the outline. Uh, everything is all set and ready. And uh, looking forward to giving our Bible study on Wednesday night. Of course, uh, Patch Kids and Pee Wee and Next Up, all of that is back on schedule here for Wednesday night. And then Sunday, can I remind you, please, about this annual event here at Shenandoah. And that is where I take the second Sunday of January every year and I give what I call my State of the Church Address. This will be my eighth one that I will give as your senior pastor. This will be my 26th senior pastor uh, address uh, in my former church as well. The Lord laid on my heart to start that back in 1995, 96, uh, that era. And just talking about the state of our church for the previous year and then where we uh, are intending to go with the Lord's help in the new year. The last thing I'd like to remind you about is Friday, this coming Friday, 9 o'clock p.m., I'm inviting every man to come and pray. It's our overnight prayer meeting. What a time. Oh, what a need. I would ask you men, would you come, please? Uh, bring, your, bring your boys. Bring your teenage young men. Do something spiritual with your kid. Let's come together as the men of God. Uh, our staff men will be here. Our deacons will be here. Our teachers and ministry directors and leaders. I'm asking for every man. If you're just a man that just comes and you're a faithful member, would you come and let's seek the Lord's face. Let's Let's pray together uh, for our country, uh, for our world, uh, for our church, for our families, for our homes, for our marriages. It's always a sweet, sweet time as we bathe the year 2021 in prayer. I'll leave you with this last statement. It's a song that has been written. Only one life so soon will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. What will you do for Christ that will last in 2021? I love you so much. I just felt very pastoral this morning, and I just wanted to kind of give you some thoughts to get your day and your week started off on the right foot. I know it's been a couple of weeks since we've done this Facebook update just with Christmas and New Year's, and I wanted to start 2021 off just talking to you from my heart. Looking for a great year. I hope you are as well. So I hope you'll find yourself in the house of God tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. God bless you. Shenandoah, I love you. Bye.